Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Shonen Archive. I'm Woking, I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated the, the remainings of our life force to watching every available Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in some easy way to read in English because we don't know Japanese. <laughs> We'd be a lot more serious if we knew Japanese, but we don't know Japanese, so therefore we're we're keeping it as we have to at least have some form of access to it, and we plan to do this until the end of Earth, or the end of us, or the end of Shonen Jump in general, whatever happens first. Uh, starting with the main series being Gintama, and the two other series that we talk about being Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 and at Kuroko's Basketball, a.k.a. the basketball in which Kuroko plays. I was about to say enjoys, but that would be a completely different <laughs> translation. Still true, though. It is. He really does love that basketball. <laughs> it's, we have to get back to it <laughs> eventually soon. We have to talk about the previous five episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen that I watched so I can get back to uh, Kuroko's Basketball. But today we're not talking about Kuroko's Basketball or Jujutsu Kaisen Zen. We're talking about Gintama. And we're talking about episodes 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, and 134, a.k.a. the Gintaro arc and the Ghost Ryokin arc. So let's get right to it, Zen. Let's start with episode 129, Beware of Food You Pick Off the Ground. Go ahead, Zen. Alrighty, episode 129. So this is, we start off with them learning that Sadaharu doesn't feel well. He like doesn't want to eat food. They're worried about him. So they take him to a veterinarian. Uh, and he's like, oh, he probably ate something gross. Dogs eat nasty shit all the time. Um, and they do an x-ray, and it, it's a human hand in there. So they're worried because they think Sadaharu ate someone and killed them. Uh, but it was actually just like a, a sex toy, like a blow-up doll. It was a blow-up doll, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they bump into Katsura, uh, and they uh, Elizabeth is there. And Katra's like, oh yeah, Elizabeth swallowed an old man. So Elizabeth <laughs> has to get surgery to get the old man pulled out. Um, they overhear a conversation about this old person's dog. Um, Kintaro. Kagura. Yeah, that's the, the titular Kintaro. Mm -hmm. uh, because this old man is basically dead. He's like... Uh, I think he's in a coma or just unconscious or something. He's not awake is, is the point he, of it. He's very close to dying. Yeah, so he can't take care of the dog anymore. Um, so they have to... Uh, they give the dog to the vet because they can't take care of it. And the old man can't because he's on death's door. Kagura chooses to stay with Sadaharu at the vet overnight because uh, she doesn't want to leave him alone. And then she finds Katsura and the old... The old dog, Katsura chooses to stay with the old dog. And he kind of gives this little speech about, like, what a what a little little samurai hero this dog is, always taking care of his master. And so Kagura decides that they're going to break the dog out and take it to see the old man. And then the dog attacks Katsura and starts to speak and reveals that it's uh, some kind of world-destroying monster that Parasite possesses X. this dog. Um, and once the old man dies, he'll be free to go and and devour the planet. Um, Kagura just wants to get rid of it. Katsura is like, wait, we could at least, you know, I bet the old man at least wants to see it, so we could do something nice still by helping the old man see the dog, even if the dog sucks. Uh, and then they get attacked by a bunch of cats who want to kill him. Uh, so that they can get out of their cat bodies because they, they are aliens from planet puke which is called that because every time they succeed in their mission they they get out of their hosts by the hosts vomiting them out um and so they are attacked by these cats and they're escaping on Sadaharu. uh katsura chooses to sacrifice himself because he wants to cuddle all of the cats but it doesn't work and they just run past him and so uh, they attack the dog, and the dog manages to fend them off with some sort of... It's called, like, the hyper-galactic 
spank or something like that to get the, rid of all the cats for a minute. Yeah, it's the one move he's been able to learn. Uh, he, yes. They, he mentions on that when you take over the host's body, you're supposed to become super strong, but the only thing he was ever able to learn with the dog body was a sp- like how to do one pull-up, and that's basically it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we cut back to the hospital, and the old man gets up uh, and says that it's time for his walk. And that's where the episode ends. Uh, okay. Some things on this one. It's really, I really did like the the stuff with Elizabeth at the beginning, where, because he cuts her, keeps going like, oh yeah, it's a, it, it, there's a shadow inside of Elizabeth, of what, the Congress is going like, that's just Elizabeth. You're, you've made, your pet is an old man. <laughs> you've made terrible decisions with Elizabeth. You need yeah. to open your eyes. I love the x-ray, and it's literally just the guy's shape in the costume. Yeah, perfectly encaps- encapsulating all of Elizabeth, which is funny. I like that Katsura still calls Kagura leader from when the last time she was his leader. So <laughs> he just says he just now calls her leader whenever he sees anything, and he just instantly follows whatever she has to say. <laughs> um, there's a real good bit when they um, they try and bribe the doctor to prevent them from fixing Sadaharu. Because they're just like, no, 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 it's fine. We'll deal with it our own. You know, you don't have to worry about it. You don't need to call the cops. You don't need to do anything. Because <laughs> they're just so sure that he's eaten and killed somebody. Uh, that when the sex doll comes out, they also both have like an expression of just like, oh. Like they're done with it. Like from this point on, they're just done with this entire art. <laughs> they don't want to be involved with it anymore. <laughs> that last bit of theirs was the last energy that they had. And now it's just completely drained from them, which was funny. They had, like, a the build-up to it. Because they do, like, the world's saddest introduction to this dog. And it goes on for a really long time. Like, it goes on for five minutes to the point where I was just like, I guess it's just, like, the, the, the actual vibe for the remaining of this episode. Because uh, there's definitely been episodes where the, the tone was a little bit more... Like, there were some jokes, but for the most part, it was sad for most of it. And all of that immediately changes the second that the dog starts speaking... <laughs> Yes. Like, the the jump from him going immediately, I was like... Uh, there was an immediate... Because I was like, you know, obviously, you know, it's a dog. So, as anyone who's a big fan of dogs or cats, I have a very big weakness for them. So I was, like, losing it here at the beginning. And then when that happened, I was like, this fucking anime, <laughs> you son of a bitch. You got me back for it. And I was just like, oh, okay. And I just felt like, okay, I guess this is the tone for the episode for the remaining of it. And then they pull it back uh, near the end of it. But I actually thought that the setup here was pretty good where he's talking about like, oh, yeah, I don't want to see that old man anymore. I've been waiting for him to die this entire time. Like, it's so aggro how much the this dog does not want to see his owner at all. And um, I thought it was pretty funny when to see because it really did get me. I was like, okay. I didn't see where this was coming. And then I was like, oh, that's why they did all that planet destruction stuff at the beginning. Because there's, like, an entire, like, setup about talking about, like, the world's being destroyed by giant forces or something. And I was like, I don't know why it starts off like that. And I didn't pick it up until the right here where they reveal, okay, this is why it's like this. Uh, I like that the reason that he got trapped in this dog body is that he was so confident about how easily he could just destroy everything that he went in there with his eyes closed. <laughs> And he picked the dog body because of uh, the hubris. And then when they actually say about the puke one, when the puke one comes in, <laughs> and he's like, I'm so confident that I'm going to go in there with my eyes half shut. <laughs> so the, the the fact that they got trapped in cat bodies is still technically on them. Because <laughs> they were at least half uh, looking when they went in there. Uh, and yeah, I also like when after they learn about how this dog is like pl- bent on world domination... They're just immediately like, ah, you know, the vibe is off. I, I don't really feel like doing this anymore. <laughs> and there's a, there was a, there was a romance to it at the beginning, and you know what? I'm just not feeling it anymore with this fucking dog <laughs> that I have to deal with now. But uh, they decide that they're the, that they're gonna do it, and then all the cats attack. And I thought it was uh, 
pretty funny how into cats and dogs Scott Zara seemed to be in. I forget if it's this episode or the next one where he talks about, like, so cats and dogs have been at an internal struggle for world domination this entire time. He's like, no, no, you're misunderstanding the situation. This only happened 18 years ago. It was completely by accident that we just just so happened to be going uh, cats and dogs when they have beef with each other. <laughs> there was no, like, actual, like, greater history to this. We just kind of accidentally did it like that. <laughs> But he's, like, completely ignoring him. And, yeah. I thought it was a very interesting setup. Uh, a lot of the stuff at the beginning was super uh, heavy emotional. And then it immediately took a dive into uh, some extremely silly things right afterwards. And it ends up going... And it ends up setting up stuff that we'll, we'll talk about in the second episode. As we actually get to know more about the old man that he's with. And all this other stuff. But, yeah. That's how I feel about it. I ended up enjoying it. Even though it was, like, a really weird roller coaster of like 18 minutes there at the beginning <laughs> where it was yeah. i was being taken on a real wild ride how'd you feel zen <laughs> uh same it was good it, it was nice uh it was, it was it started off very emotional and i was like oh it's gonna be one of these episodes uh and then it was immediately like i'm the satan demon dog <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> so i like when gintoki and, and shapachi were like yeah i'm not into it <laughs> I'm not into it this time. I'll see ya. And they just like bounce, and it just becomes a Kagura slash Katsura episode. Um, Katsura is not that funny, actually, in this one, uh, other than the Elizabeth bit at the beginning, which wasn't even really him. Mm. Um, which is unfortunate because I usually like Katsura jokes, but he was just kind of around in this one. He does a little um, bit more in the second one, and it's mainly he does. He does have some moments in the second. Yeah, one. in uh, this one, was... he's definitely a little not as good as we've seen in in previous ones yeah. where he's a focus on it for sure. But it was good. It was good humor. Uh, I really like the scene where all the cats break through the cafe window, and <laughs> Kagura like screams in slow motion with all the glass shards flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh. Yeah, it was, yeah, good. It was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yep, good setup. Let's go on to the next one, episode 130, which is the end of this arc. Cat lovers and dog lovers are mutually exclusive. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, Kagura uh, has the dog. Katsura goes to the hospital where, where the old man is, expecting to find them, only to realize that they have not arrived yet. Um, and then they find out that the old man is gone. So they end up hiring um, Gintoki and Shimpachi, who still have the sex doll that was inside of Satomaru's stomach, with them uh, to go find the old man, because he's escaped. Uh, Kagura, Sadaharu, and the little dog, uh, Kintaro, have been surrounded by, like, giant cats. Um, and Kintaro starts uh, uh, talking about how his, his life has represented by candles, and his candles are running out. Um, Kagura replaces one of his candles with a sparkler, which reduces <laughs> him to three candles immediately. Because um, it starts melting one of them, and then I think Sadaharu uh, pees it out, and then he loses all of more of his life from that. Yeah, so he's um, only at two. Yeah, he's at like two or three left. Um, Kintaro mentions that him and the old man actually basically like hated each other and they were always telling each other to go and die um and then it's kind of revealed afterward uh that the old man shows up because he's he thinks that he's on a walk with the dog because he you know that's his thing is they, they went on a walk all the time um they kind of reveal that, like oh he he told the the puppy the very first word to the puppy was to tell it to go and die and everyone left him because he sucked and then it kind of turns out later on that he's that he was saying that because he was like, oh, you know, um, I think he should have died because it's cruel to leave him alone. Because it's it's harder to be the one that's left behind after someone dies than it is to be the one who dies first. Uh, so I, I feel bad for him. And then they kind of have a little bonding moment where he's like, oh, you know, um, I'm, don't worry, I'm going to die, or you're going to die before me, so no matter what, I'll stay alive longer than you, little dog, so that you don't have to suffer that again. Um, we cut back to the cats attacking, and Kagura is, like, fending them off, and the old man is like, I really must be dying because there's flying cats, <laughs> and Kagura is, like, fighting them all in the background. Um, 
the dog is like, ah, the old man is also down to one candle. They're both at one candle left, and he's like, I'm, I'm gonna, he's gonna die. And then his one candle is like a flamethrower. It's like super bright because he doesn't want to be the first one to die. So he taunts the dog. He like, he's like, oh, are you gonna die, you stupid dog? It sucks for you. And he starts trying to walk away. But then the dog gets up and bites the leash, and he's like, I'm not gonna fucking die before you. Um. The dog and the old man are then walking by a river, and they break out into a run for just a moment together one last time before they both faint. Uh, the the cat has a sniper rifle, and he's going to shoot the dog and win the whatever war they're having, only to find out he can't pull a trigger because he has cat paws, so he can't use the gun at all. And then they all get run over by Gintoki, who doesn't even really want to be there. He's just kind of <laughs> like, what's happening? What? Why am I here? Uh, and then the uh, uh, the dog dies, and the old man does uh, kind of die, like, right afterward, but has this moment of, like, I'm glad that, you know, I didn't die before you, so that you didn't have to, you know, but, yeah, it didn't have to be alone for any amount of time. Yeah. Uh, and then it plays the end credits, and it's actually a very sweet set of end credits, because it plays the credits over the spot where the two had died by the river, and Kagura had left a little bouquet of flowers for them there. Yeah, and it ended up being a very nice... I'll say that after this one, I'm glad that I went to bed for like six hours and then continued on. <laughs> Cause this yeah, one... I'm gonna need you to do the plot recaps for the next one, because after this one, into the next one, I was so mentally checked out of how stupid the next one are. Fair. I I'll, 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 I'll do the next one. <laughs> because <laughs> it, it did help having the break there, because I was like, you know what? I think, from what people have told me, that the next one is very silly, so I'm gonna just do this one first and then i'll deal with it and yeah that ending was oh my fucking god i was just like it is just done it's like it's hard to it's such a hard pivot to the next one yes <laughs> but let's get into it i'll say oh before we go into this one because i remember this bit this was in the Kimpachi sensei from the last one there's a bit there where he gets feedback saying like, hey, so Kagura is supposed to be vulnerable to light. That's why she always has the that umbrella. That was the funniest bit maybe in both of these episodes. Yeah. The ending bit where they're like, yeah, Kagura is weak to the sun. So why was she running on the beach? <laughs> yeah. The, my, the studio? <laughs> my favorite part was like, oh, yes, this shot that made the Kagura VA say like, who's that girl <laughs> doing this? Because it can't be Kagura. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but he says, oh, but she's fine, you ask. How, why is that? Actually, it was filmed in a studio, and then they show how it looks in the studio, and they have, like, old man Musashi also dressed as her to be her shadow. <laughs> it was really funny. It's like, the funniest version of, like, fixing, like, a slight record. It's like, because I had actually honestly forgotten that Kagura is supposed to be super, like, hurt by the sun, which is why she gets the, uh... The umbrella everywhere with her so it didn't even dawn on me that ed where she's running in the sun perfectly fine there would be some issues with it with the yeah, lore because all yato are vulnerable to, to direct sunlight yeah that's why they have to keep the rest so that, that i thought that bit was really funny that was a good one then he's like okay there you go everyone happy great don't forget that when you're doing your work <laughs> for next time see you later <laughs> um all right, so yes, back to this one as it goes here. The relationship between um, the the old man and this dog ends up being the big change. I like how it's set up in the beginning where he's like, oh yeah, you think this old man is just like a crotchety old man. He's like, he's telling this young dog to die. And then later on when it's revealed, like the reason why he says that, like he's just so begrudging that he's like tired of, he's like, oh, one of the lines he says is like, uh, you can have as many buddies as you want. You can't have more wives because then you're going to get in a lot of trouble. But you can have as many buddies as you want and nobody cares. The <laughs> You don't get in trouble for having like multiple buddies. You, nobody gets angry at you. Um, but he says the the part that sucks the most is that after you know they die, the only thing that's left behind is like you have to kind of pick up the pieces and kind of go from there. So, to avoid that feeling, he wants the dog to go, because he's like, oh, I'm taking care of this dog, but I'm already old. Like, no one's going to be able to take care of this dog after I'm gone. Uh, so, I need to basically... <laughs> he needs to die before me, and then we're all good here. 
And his wife was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm I'm 10 years younger than you. I'll outlive you. He's like, no, you won't because you're different from me. You're not the same. <laughs> and he ends up being right because she ends up dying Oh, first. yeah. She's like, I'm 10 years younger than you. And he was like, you he, he randomly just goes, you can't trust women. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust women. Yeah, he goes that way. But he also says, like, we have different attitudes on this. I'm just yeah, more. He says, um, you don't have my resolve. Yeah, you don't have my resolve. But yeah, but it, uh, one of the other things he says is that uh, one of the worst things that you can do is kind of make a buddy cry, and that comes back later on when they're both doing their final run. Because as they're talking about like the, the experience about like, hey, when everyone looked at us, it was just an old man and his dog walking in the park, not knowing that both of us could barely walk. We were literally through pure <laughs> spite keeping each other alive because we didn't want to be the one to die first. And we would just run, even though it would hurt like hell. And so when they have their final run, and the old man faints first, and it looks like he's the one who died first, and then finally Kentaro, he, he falls down and he dies, and then the old man declares that he wins. And you, you can see that he's won because he's crying. Because he was the one who went, oh, I'm, I'm breaking down here thinking about this old man <laughs> that I literally knew for a combined total of ten minutes, but he's crying. Because he's the one who gets to mourn him, and that's the thing that he wants. He didn't want anyone to mourn him. He didn't want to have anyone to go through what he was going through. And that completely recontextualized what he's going for and, like, is a new idea of, like, the crotchety old man and, you know, why they're all crotchety. Like, there's in plenty of stories you have the stories of the old man who's, like, really, like, you know, mean, for lack of a better words. But I think this is version of one is very well done and hits all the right emotional beats and fuck this episode was just like it's it's it really is one of the ones where it's just it's like two episodes it's very emotional at the beginning and then it's very silly throughout most of all the rest of it and then including during this fight like what you said when the cats they're fighting the cats and he's like i must be dying because i see cats flying everywhere <laughs> That's yeah it's it's very trademark Gintama where it's like it's like it reminds me of the episodes where um, Okita's sister dies where it's like oh it's my really sick sister that's really sad and then the rest of the middle of the episodes are her like torturing people by forcing them to eat spicy food that they can't handle and you're like what the fuck and then it pivots right back to oh my dead sister died yeah, and then, like, they it's, have... <laughs> it's, like, total tonal whiplash. It is the ultimate form of tonal whiplash, but... Yeah, I like it when the Katara starts being a little bit more real with his feelings. Because in the beginning, he's acting a lot like the old man. He's like, nah, fuck that old man. I want to stay alive, and then I can finally conquer the world. And it turns out that that's not what he wanted. Is that what was really happening is that he wants him to die because he's just tired of seeing him suffer. Because at this point, he's only keeping himself alive so that the dog doesn't have to. Uh, live without him and he doesn't have to worry about all that so it ends up being a very very touching weirdly touching version of a, a dog and uh, um, about a man and his dog that you see a lot there's plenty of stories for a set let me tell you you will find plenty of stories with a sad dog but this one felt very different and very like a different kind of view of like um being with your pet. Because honestly, it is something that I've thought about and it is something that I've also had to deal with after a person has died where their pet is still around. And it, it does honestly feel a little bit weird. So at that kind of, then that kind of point, it does remind me a lot of that, which is probably also why I ended up fucking losing it near the end of it. Because <laughs> by the end of it, I was just like, I, I can't handle any more of this. <laughs> it's, yeah, it was, it was real tough at the end. Yeah, it was. It was, but I thought it was very well done and it honestly is uh kind of the peak wonder of Gintama is that they can do this where this episode with an old man crying over his dog saying I finally I did it buddy I outlived you you don't have to cry for me because I can cry for you is the same one where Katra is fighting a bunch of puke cat aliens with a sex doll that he is mm -hmm. read that he is named Susanna <laughs> Because he is teaming up with it to fight a bunch of cats <laughs> that only want to kill this dog because after the dog dies, um, they can return back to their the beings that they were. And Kagura tries to tell him, like, hey, 
He's already dying. You don't need to do anything and they just don't listen. Uh, but yeah, it, I, I thought it was a very well done episode. Super crazy emotional for sure. How do you feel, Zen? Pretty much the same. Uh, it was it was a very sweet ending for a very stupid story. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I really liked them playing the end credits over the, the scene of the flowers at the riverside. Something yeah. that you think they would do for like a very major character moment. And it was for some old man and a dog we barely knew. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I thought that, that, that was very well done. And yeah, I can understand why a lot of people were like, maybe this should be its two own for its thing, because it's a real rough to go into the next arc after this one. <laughs> Which, thankfully, I will handle describing it, because uh, <laughs> I can understand Zed kind of being checked out. Because <laughs> this next I was, arc... I went through all of them straight in a row. Uh -huh. uh, like 129 all the way through. And, dude... I checked out of this next one so fucking... I think the minute that my brain turned off was when Shimpachi got out of the uh, the hot spring with, like, a super long old man dick. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, good. after that part, it never really uh -huh. comes... It's not like it's an important plot point having the giant dick, but it is a change of his, I guess. Yeah, understandable. Uh, so that is episode 130. Let me go on to episode... I always have to make note now that I have to actually, like, uh, keep track of when certain things end. Oh, god damn it! of course it turns into 26 months. It's fine, I'll put 26 down. Uh, <laughs> let's go on to episode 131, which is a four-episode arc called the Ryukin arc, uh, which is called Fights Often Ensue During Trips. So the basic setup is is that Atose sends uh, uh, Gintoki and the crew over to a hot springs. They're going to ins they're going to assist the owner, which is Iowa, who is managing the inn. And that the second they show up there, uh, Gintoki and Shinpachi see that there's a ghost right by her, um, and they're super freaked out by it. They're super like, oh my god, it's a ghost. To the point where Gintoki refuses to uh, consider them ghosts and actually says it's actually a stand. Uh, like a JoJo stand. <laughs> and he does the full-on, like, Joseph... I think it's Joseph, right? The When he goes, like, it's a stand and then, like, he has Star Platinum behind him, but I don't think he's doing it's, Jotaro's pose. Uh, I'd have to see the pose again. I, re I remember when he does the pose. But didn't you tweet it? I'm go yes, I did. I got it. I, get, I, I can show you it right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. I can show you. would Literally, Zen would know. I'm pretty sure it's him, but Zen would actually know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is... Uh, I mean, That's not anyone's, like, exact pose, but I think the closest one is Joseph. Yeah, that'd have to be. Which is funny, because this is a whole six years before he would go on to play Joseph. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is a good... Uh... I, it's not even a reference, it's just a funny fact of history that he would go on to be Joseph uh, eventually in one of the games, and then that would transition into the anime the, that same yeah. year. Which is funny, because a lot of the game actors did not keep their roles going into uh, the anime. Really? But he did, yeah. That's funny. So yeah, they they start freaking out, saying like, oh my god, it's it stands, please call him stands. And they start doing a lot of bits as they go in there. For some reason, only uh, Shinpachi and Gintoki can see them. Uh, Kagura and um, Otai just see, like, nothing. They just treat it like, oh, we're just in a, a resort that kind of looks a little bit run down. Because <laughs> they treat it as if they were going, like, to a really nice place. It was like, oh, it's real nice for Otose to just invite us to this place. Because, like, nah, she's up to something. There's no way it would be that nice. And then it ends up being a, a really decrepit-looking place. Also, while they're going in there, I think it's before they enter, they see a, a girl in the snow. And Gintoki calls out to her. And then Shipachi says, like, hey, she's leaving... She's walking in the snow, but she's not leaving any footprints behind. That's clearly a ghost, and so they get really freaked out. But anyway, they go inside the place, and they start, like, hanging about. Um, I think uh, Kagura and Tai go to the Western-style room, and then she wants them to stay in, like, the... Uh, 
the samurai room, which is, like, filled with, like, a bunch of places that say, like, do not enter. Like, there's a bunch of cursed seals all over their room about where they want to stay. And she makes the, uh, she says, like, oh, no, the, a kid just put a bunch of holes in it, and I had to cover him up. He's like, oh, it's just a bunch of holes. And they open it up, and they see, like, a ghost inside, and he's being hung. Um... And she, and then the old lady says something cryptic, like, oh, I shouldn't have been so mean for him for making the holes. Like, she's obviously trying to freak them out. And so they immediately run into the other room and say, can we please stay in here? And then inside there, they meet a ghost that looks a lot like Zapelli, or at least I thought looked a lot like Zapelli. There's no Yeah, real... he's like an old man. He looks like he's wearing, like, stereotypical magician's clothing. He is, which is what Zapelli... Like the top hat and the cape and stuff. That's yeah, <laughs> which is kind of what Zapelli wears. I only bring it up because I thought that was a, probably another JoJo reference. I think there's like one or there's a bunch of them throughout them on here. But well, yeah, yeah, I mean they call the ghost stands the whole thing. Yeah, every the episode, entire the thing. Time. It's all stands, baby. It, 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 it's basically JoJo the arc. Which um, is funny because he he makes it a a joke where it's like, oh, we call it stands, like a JoJo reference, and then that's just what every character calls it. <laughs> From like that it's just point the on. correct word. For soul, it's, they're just talking about soul. Yep. Um, so yep, they they see that they freak out. They always freak out. The old lady tells them like, "Hey," um, as she's like um, treating them in the room. She leaves like a cryptic. Don't tell them anything about where you're in. Uh, so it's clear that she can see the ghost. She's not being haunted by him. It looks like she might be uh, working with the stands. I will be calling them stands from this point on, even though they are ghosts. Um, Apparently that's supposed to be the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> that does not look like Lincoln. <laughs> that looks like. Ah, uh, sure. We'll say Abraham Lincoln. Why not? Abraham Lincoln and Zapelli. You never see them in the same place <laughs> at the same time. Anyway, they end up going to the hot springs, and while they're in the hot springs, Ota- uh, Otai and Kagura are just enjoying themselves in the hot springs. But Shinpachi and Kentoki are like filled with a bunch of stands all around them, and they're freaking the hell out. Um, Gintoki starts saying, like, oh, no, it's just steam. Don't worry about it. He's like, that's clearly not steam. He's like, no, it's steam. Check it out. And he pushes him into one of them, and he absorbs the stand, which turns him into, uh, man, what is the name of this? It's, like, a very specific Japanese rock star. They call him the Excellence, but I don't remember what he is specifically a... Oh, yeah, His Excellency or whatever? Yeah, His Excellency, which is, like, based off of, like, a very specific, like, type of Japanese artist, um... Apparently it's H.E. Demon Kagura. No, that's the one that Kentoki turns into near the last episode. But yeah, either way, it's it's referencing like a metal rock dude from Japan. It's definitely one of those kind of vibes. Have you ever seen that um, anime Detroit Rock City, I think? That's basically what... I have not. No, well, if you've seen it out there, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a Japanese rocker with like the the white face paint and stuff like that. that's how they end up looking but either way they call him the excellence like he says he leaves it and he's like oh no i feel good i don't see the ghost anymore he's like i'm so sorry shinpachi i've i've destroyed your life those weren't <laughs> those were those were stands those weren't that wasn't a trick of the eyes and as he's leaving the the uh spa he has a huge dick never explained never really comes up again don't worry about it uh kagura in he eventually sees Kagura and Tai because he wants to apologize to Tai to what happened to Shinpachi, but it turns out they've also been possessed by the Excellence, and now they're and then they go leave to go play Uno, and <laughs> they just leave to go play Uno, and that's what their bodies do for the remainder of this arc is just go play uh, Uno. Um and. Gintoki starts following the old lady because she's like, uh, she's laughing at him. And as she's walking through a hallway, there's a bunch of ghost hands going for him. And they start clapping. Uh, and then when they start clapping, uh, the old lady says, like, congratulations, uh, you earned the job or something like that. And that's where the episode ends. And that's episode 131 for the time being. So, Yeah. I think I want to hear about your experience on this, Zen. At following the emotional arc for what was the last one, how was it for this one? Oh, yeah, I totally checked out. It was stupid as shit. Um, I just... Like, the Rockstar references and stuff were totally lost on me. Uh, the vast majority of the jokes in this were just like... I mean, the JoJo references were okay. Um... I thought it was kind of funny when Kagura and Otai come out of the thing also possessed because they're like making fun of the fact that the the guys are in the um 
the hot spring, and they're like, ha ha, I bet you're with some big old tattooed guys or whatever, ha ha, and it's like a ghost everywhere, <laughs> and there's none on the girl's side. Yeah, um, until, until the end when we don't see them anymore, two of them do enter the hot springs. Yeah, two of them walk in. Um, uh, and yeah, so I thought it was kind of funny that they walk out and uh, are also possessed. Um, and that was really it. Like, when, when Shinpachi got out of the thing and was like, oh, I guess there were no ghosts after all. I feel much better now. And he's, like, possessed. And they Kintoki's like, oh, you have a 100,000-year-old dick. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to take me from this dog ending to talking about <laughs> Shinpachi's dick? It also doesn't make sense. The dick doesn't just, like, grow with years. It's not like uh, the rings of a tree. It doesn't... <laughs> and you can't... It's not really how they work. But anyway, yeah, this is a very silly start to the episode. Um, and I assume it only loses you from here on in because it ends up having a lot of historical references. <laughs> There's a couple parts where uh, I, I it, like drew me back in and I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, but most of the time I was just sitting there like, this is fucking ugh. Yeah, again, following that dog one. It's a good thing when this originally aired, there was like a week long break from all of it because i can't imagine even with six hours it still felt like yeah this is a weird one to follow up the dog one so i can't imagine actually sitting down and seeing it all one and going from that episode to this one even if this is the start of a specific arc and it kind of it goes different places from here uh forward but still it's a hell of a way to transition to the next one <laughs> maybe a little bit and it, ne- it needed like a standalone solo one that was really funny that kind of brought you back from it but this one's like setting up future ones and they set up future jokes and stuff like that but yeah i ended up feeling that this one was okay i like jojo references because i'm a, b- a big fan of jojo even i even found a jojo reference when it was supposed to be abraham lincoln so <laughs> that can probably show you i am a true jojo fan because i see it everywhere um uh one moment oh i just got a work email and i'm gonna look away from that for the time being (laughs) Uh, nothing to do with that don't want anything to do with that because it ends up being uh you want me to do what but anyway yeah i'm kind of similar to you i'm glad i had the six hour break in it so i could just be like ah this is a very silly episode as opposed to going like I'm so checked out after this one. If I had seen it right after this one, I would have been so totally checked out, even with the occasional JoJo reference. I wouldn't have been either, even able to take notes, I think. It would have just been like a... Uh, okay. Uh, next one of these, I guess. So. Yeah, it was It was such impressive ass. I was like, man, come <laughs> on. <laughs> it really is. So... I'm going to take a quick pause on this one as I the, my phone has not stopped blowing up. So give me a sec as I figure out what's going on with my <laughs> boss texting me. One moment. We'll be right, right back. We are back. My my boss is still texting me, but it's okay. We've settled the thing. <laughs> We've it's hush hush now. Let's get back into the real shit, which is Gintama. Episode 132. Briefs will, while unavoidably, will unavoidably get skid marks. Uh, oh man, this one. <laughs> it's I, so fucking bad, bro. <laughs> how, how much are you a fan of the Nobunaga era and the inner workings of his assassination and the <laughs> succession plans right afterwards? Because <laughs> that will all depend on how much you enjoy this episode. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Okay. So, while previous, well, back from where we were, the ghost hands are giving Kentucky a round of applause and he informs him that he's passed his job interview. Iowa says that basically what I need is I need help. Um, and you're going to help me. That's why I asked Atose to bring you guys over. And it turns out you have the aptitude. And he's like, what, how does that make sense? Uh, I don't have the aptitude for anything. And she says, the fact that you're able to see them and you're able to communicate them is good enough. I think he ends up saying that to Ray, not to the old lady. Uh, and she basically holds him hostage, saying, like, if he ever wants his friends back, then he's basically going to have to do this job. Otherwise, they're just always going to be forever playing Uno as the excellence until the end of time. 
Uh, and she basically tells him, like, the inner workings of the job. You're going to have to take care of the ghost. You're going to have to, like, to take care of the stands. They're all ghosts here. They're all um, hanging out, and you just need to take care of them. Uh, if you have a bag of dry permissions and peanuts, they'll listen to you. Which is actually important because he ends up using it for for stuff later on. But he starts his work off uh, trying to help out the stands. Um, in the beginning, he ends up going to the room which has Nobunaga on it. He's banging his head. He's real bummed out about the assassination that took place in uh, Hoshienji. Which is, everyone knows is the famous battlefield where he was killed by his superior... Not his superior, his underling. I guess what would you consider? Underling, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, he was killed by. No, it wasn't Mitsuhide. It was a catchy. I think. No, was it a catchy? I think there's like three specific here. But anyway, I'm going on. But he's feeling really bad about his assassination. Uh, he's punching his wall. He's complaining about yeah. Mitsuhide was the person who betrayed him and killed him. A catchy Mitsuhide. Um, and then turns out he's in the next room exactly afterward, and he's also banging his head against the wall because he was, um, he was also assassinated and he was taken over by Hideyoshi. And then Hideyoshi is also there and he's complaining to them saying, hey, can you stop punching the wall? And he, they're all afraid. No, actually in the next war room over, they expect it to be, uh, Mitsuhide in it, but instead it is Francisco Xavier, who is the person who brought Christianity to Japan, and he's just kind of hanging out here and, uh, just banging his head. I forget what he says, but he's just kind of like, oh, he's complaining about his barber because his haircut sucks. And he's like, yeah, what he has is- a shitty haircut. And he's like, that damn barber. That damn barber, he screwed me. And then Ray says like, oh yeah, that's who he is. Famously, he had a very bad haircut. He's like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It should be uh, Hideyoshi who should be the person in here, but Hideyoshi is outside and he knocks on Nobunaga's door and and Mitsuhide because they're making too much of a ruckus. They kind of talk to each other. They have a very passive conversation with each other. It starts off like, oh, hey, Nobunaga, when did I see you last? He's like, hmm, you know, it's been since Hoshienji, basically. Do you remember anything? He's like, mm, nope, don't remember anything about that. I kind of died. Somebody killed me right afterwards, so my memory is hazy. Uh, and they have like this giant argument that is going full deep talking about the Japanese history of them. And it immediately gets cut shot off by Xavier who shoots all three of them, who kills them, and then he kind of walks off. Uh, this joke comes back again. I thought this was the funniest joke of this entire arc because they do it two more times and every single time it killed me. Because he just, like, kills them and he silently just returns to his room and everyone just kind of watches him after he shoots them. I thought it was funny. Anyway, get back to the stuff. Uh, Gintoki's trying to help out all the... The guest that comes in, a headless samurai comes in, and he says, carry my luggage, and he says, you got it, and he's carrying his head. He ends up replacing it with a deer. A skeleton ghost asks him to wash his back. Uh, He washes it so hard, he turns into dust. There's a lot of talk about jazz from the skeleton. The skeleton is a big fan of jazz. Uh, But yeah, he he washes them so hard, he turns to dust. Oyawa is reprimanding Hintoki, because he's like, you're really sucking the place up. You're really, you're really shitting in the bed over this entire. You've only been here for a single day, and you've kind of sucked everything. But there's a big, important like guest coming in, which is Iyasu, who is the follower after Hideyoshi, after um, Nobunaga, who united the. Cl- there's basically like three big dudes in Japan uh, around this era, and one of them was Iyasu, and the other one is Nobunaga, and then there's a third one after Iyasu, I don't remember, but they're the people who were most famous for uniting Japan. Anyway, uh, Gintoki's really sick about his treatment here, and he ends up teaming up with Rei, because she's like, I knew that you were a rock enough guy that would bring change to this place legitimately. So they're gonna team up, and they're gonna rebel, and then I assume that this was a reference to the Pillars, because he wakes up the three, uh, um, he calls them, like, the Undies crew. Then the same similar manner of, like, the Pillar Men, where he's, like, saying, like, oh, arise, awaken from your time again. And he brings him in, and then he's, like, sitting on a throne for some reason. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he ends up, um, trying to team up with them. They don't want to hang out. They don't want to do anything. They're constantly trying, they're constantly fighting with each other. 
But finally, they get into inside the same um, hot tub as Iyasu, and the plan here is is that they're going to take his boxers, because he's wearing boxers, he's wearing the nicest clothes of all of them. Um, but basically their plan, which is a very, very dumb plan, the more I'm going to be mentioning this, but is to go inside the hot springs that he's in and then just fart on him, and that will make him have a very bad time and he'll never want to return to the inn. They go inside the hot springs, they start doing the plan, and all three of the ghosts fart on Gintoki instead, launches him directly into the air, and that's when we reveal Iowa has been in control of the three the entire time, because she's an extremely powerful stand user. And she says that basically you would need an extremely powerful stand to stand against me, but you don't have that. So you're just basically lost because you're basically fighting this entire mountain because all of them are following me. Um, and yeah, and Gintoki ends up in a cell. Ray is going to be... They don't show it this episode. Yeah, they show it near the end of this one, but Ray gets locked up and for her attempt to rebel against her. And Gintoki is put inside a cell and he says, like, I need three of the strongest um, stands in order to actually beat her. And I don't know if I have that. And that's when he finds the presence of his friends, which is Kagura, Shinpachi, and Otai, who have, uh, their bodies are playing Uno, but their spirits are here for him. And then he realizes that he actually has a chance now because this is what he needs to be able to stop uh, Oyua. And that's the end of this episode, an extremely extremely hard episode to watch if you are not a big knower of Japanese history and the inner workings of Nobunaga and other characters. Zen, tell me what you feel about this one. <laughs> Boy. It sucks. Mm -hmm. The whole joke just being like, oh, they wear briefs. Actually, wait. There was one. Uh, was I don't remember if it was in this episode or the next episode, but there was actually one joke that I thought was funny, and that's when they betray Gintoki. <laughs> and he's like, "The Breeze Trio, you turned on me." Yeah, it's in and this they, one. They like launch him out of the out of the hot spring. Yeah, I thought that part was funny. That, that was this uh, one. But no, the rest of it sucks. Uh, the only part that was kind of good was when the old woman reveals her stand is her dead husband. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can definitely say I think that's very fair. You're not the only one this because I I made a uh, I talked about it in a tweet saying like oh yeah, um, it's a really good thing that because of Fago I actually do know a lot about Japanese history because there's constantly an event where they talk about it. So even though my skewering of Nobunaga is a little bit fucked up, I actually followed enough of this to go like oh you know I'm I'm picking up all this. <laughs> I know what jokes they're making right now. Um, and, but the funny thing is when one of the other people who has watched a lot of Gintama was just like, oh yeah, I was just completely lost for that this entire episode. <laughs> I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> it's so, it's so specific. Um, but yeah, the, there's uh, not much in this one. It kind of feels like just kind of going to the next one. I did like the bit with the skeleton because the skeleton keeps coming back. He comes back two more times with people washing his back, which I thought was just very funny. Uh, he also makes reference to like, Gintoki being like, oh yeah, I can feel it. You're like a free from jazz, man. You're The way you're <laughs> watching my back. And he's just like, I have no idea what you're talking about because when I brought up the jazz thing, I actually don't know anything about jazz. <laughs> so I'm just very lost. Um, And yeah, and I like that bit where Xavier just fucking shoots the ghost because he also has a ghost gun. So I thought that was a very uh, <laughs> silly attention to detail that when he shoots them, it's with a ghost gun. And it just comes out of nowhere when he shoots them as well. You just hear a gunshot, you see him, and then he just slowly goes back into his room. <laughs> but yeah, that's this episode. Not much to say here. <laughs> very specifics. Not enough JoJo references out of ten. It needed more. Just not enough. It's too many Nobunaga references. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's go to episode 133, which is Gin and his excellence good for no his excellency's good for nothings. So I was imprisoned, uh, Ray in a special room. This is the start of her talking about like um, stands and stuff. Uh, Ray says that Gintoki is going to be the one to stop her, but I was like, nah, whatever. He's I've basically like, defanged him. He isn't anything. He ain't shit. And then that's when Atose calls up Iowa and says, like, hey, how are they doing? Is everything all right? Um, and they kind of have, like, a back and forth. And Iowa says, like, basically, like, oh, yeah, the, this guy is, like, useless. I'm going to have to pay half. 
And then she's like, no, 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 you're going to pay me the full half. And he's like, no, you know what? This guy also says, like, he wants to stay here forever. She's like, what? You're only supposed to have him for, like, ten days. Which makes it really feel like Atosuke just had no idea what was actually going on at this end at, at all when she asked for help. And But they do seem to know each other based off of, like, some history where they say, where they even mention, I think, like, Tose's husband. Which I don't think we've ever... It's ever been brought up until this point. But you see her kind of with a man in in a flashback for a bit. Um, but yeah, Tosa basically says, like, it's very clear that you've fallen for Gintoki. And she's like, yeah, he, I think he's just, like, something very special. Um, and I think he's cool. So I'm gonna kind of keep him. But don't worry, I had to, like, reprimand him, so he's gonna be fine. And she basically says, like, oh, you can keep him. Bring back the girl. Those are the ones I actually care about. Good luck trying with that one. And then she hangs up the phone, and she's like, what the fuck was that about? And then he immediately breaks out of prison right afterwards. Yep. I think he breaks out of prison while they're still on the phone. Because I think when they're on the phone, a ghost comes up and is like, Kintoki broke out of prison. And then she's like, told you, and then hangs up the phone. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I think her exact words is that you can disciple, you can discipline a beast, but he's not a beast. He's worse. He's a wild animal. <laughs> and that's what they show him smiling, and he breaks out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, they're dealing with the breakout. What is Gintoki doing? He's partying up with Iyasu, and he's playing a song called A Thousand Winds. And he says, like, let me, he's, like, having a good time with all the ghosts, and he's like, let me play you a song. And, um, no, I think he's having a good time with Iyasu, and he has, like, a bunch of other, the, uh, Kagura and everyone else are with him, and she's wondering, how did that happen? And it gets explained to her, like, oh, no, what happened was, is that they're... Their bodies are over there, but their spirits are actually coming here, and it's because of um, Gintoki specifically, because he needed their help. That's why they felt the need to go to him. Uh, and yeah, he's having these uh, stands all have a good time, so he also ends up going to the afterlife after he shows them a good time, because he, he tells them, like, uh, I think he says something like, oh yeah, this is the greatest time of my life. He's like, I think you mean after your death. He's like, oh yeah, that's right, I did die. And then he just kind of like has a good laugh, and he moves on. And that's when he starts playing a call a song called A Thousand Winds. And it, it's really funny because it literally says Gintoki presents A Thousand Winds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he starts singing this song, and it's a really supposed to be a really sad song, and Gintoki's like crying and he's like going, oh. <laughs> like the way he sings this song is very funny. Um but he exercises a whole bunch of them. And then uh Awa kind of confronts him and <laughs> She says, the song may be powerful, but it won't work on her husband. And he's like, it's okay. I only really knew, like, the, the chorus and nothing else. <laughs> Which actually goes to show, because they play this song at the end of the arc, and he really only seems to know the chorus, because when he has to say other words, he goes, oh, he, uh, he. <laughs> like, he just kind of makes vague noises. <laughs> Which is funny. Um, they start fighting each other. Um... Oyo's stand is super powerful, and she says, like, it's not enough to, like, have control over stands. You need to be able to have, like, a stand enter your body, and you kind of still have your mental defect inside. That you still have, like, your your mind inside you. So you can actually control everything, and you become super powerful. And she gets into, like, the super Iowa form, where she's super big, and then he says, like, you're clearly just the excellence. Because fa- when she absorbs the stand, she still has the excellence phase. <laughs> And he's, mm-hmm. he says, like, whatever, you're not in control of anything. You're clearly just still just the excellence after you've taken the, the stand power. Um, this is when she starts, like, beating the shit out of Gintoki. And he's also treating all these injuries. For, it actually just turns into a serious fight for a bit as she's like... Yeah, it's like an actual anime fight for a little bit. Not for very long, but no, for a little bit. For a little bit. Um, she kind of starts talking shit about him. She, like, rushes him. She actually does a tremendous beatdown. It reminded me of all our fights in Street Fighter 6. Just the, the <laughs> ass whooping that he's receiving from this is tremendous. Um, he pins her down. He ends up um, going through like a room at the bottom floor. That's how badly she's beating him. And she starts hitting him with the oh, no, no, no. She does like a whole bunch of oh, yeah, she's bunch. giving him the oh, 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 oh. <laughs> which is really good. And it goes on for a while too as she's punching him. <laughs> um... And at the end of the barrage of punches as she's chastising him about, like, hey, you're ruining my resort, um, it reveals that Kentucky isn't harmed by any of them, um, because he's infused with Ray, 
And he has the same similar face as her, but not the same exact same face as the excellence. It's another version of like a rocker face. And he's fused with Ray because he they went into the room that um, their fight ended up them going to the room where Ray was locked in. So he was able to fuse with her and become like an ultimate stand user. And they have like a um, they have like a moment then when the punches are going down, he like is able to perfectly reflect it back. And he says like uh, he basically says like I'm going to be the one to defeat you, and that's where it ends right there. And yeah, that's this episode. How do you how do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, I thought the ending was kind of, like, okay. Um, it was, you know, sort of dumb, but, um, I thought the actual, like, fight was kind of cool. Like, the when she gives him the stand rush and then he busts out in, like, possessed mode. I was yeah. like, this is kind of cool. Yeah, um, for what is an old neat. lady versus Gintoki, this was, uh... <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, this is actually kind of cool at the, at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Um, and I like Ray. I like, she's probably the only character from this that I, like, enjoy. Uh, as like you know, because every every single mini arc in Gintama has like, its own characters we'll probably never see again. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked Ray. I, I liked her little backstory, uh, and it was cool that her and Gintoki kind of fused at the end there. And I was like, all right, that's pretty sick. Yeah, uh, it I, didn't I, redeem everything else. Yeah, but I, it did catch my attention for half a second. Yeah, we haven't made much mention of Ray, but I do, I do like her. I like I do like when um, Gintoki's correcting her because she says like ghost when they're first talking to each other. He's like, please don't say ghost. Please say Stan. And she goes like, oh, okay, my bad. And she <laughs> immediately starts calling the ghost stands. Mm-hmm. She, she's like, uh, the ghost, oh, I'm sorry, stands are like this. <laughs> it immediately falls over. But yeah, um, it was pretty nice. And yeah, I ended up enjoying this episode too. Those, uh, the fight scene between them ended up being like, okay, I'm kind of into this. And I like that setup at the beginning where Atose is like, just like, Saying, like, oh, you have no idea who the hell you're fucking with. <laughs> if you think that you've disciplined him in any kind of capacity at all, <laughs> you're you're not. You're dealing with a real dick here. I wish I knew how to get this guy in line. He's yeah, literally a- like, you're- <laughs> yeah, she's like, you're really dealing with a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is a great way to set him up. I love the Kentucky and Atose, uh, relationship so much we have it's been a while since we've kind of had a talk about it but i love the way that she kind of treats someone like oh yeah this piece of shit over here <laughs> let me tell you uh, about him yeah she's not even like oh i have faith in him she's literally like this guy's a piece of shit good luck <laughs> yeah, i want the girl and the kid back you could keep the rest i don't care about them because i don't <laughs> it's pretty great so yeah yeah, it was this episode. I, I I had a good time watching it. I was uh, by the end of it, I was kind of into it, trying to see where this was going to go. A lot of it also had to deal with the fact that this was a stand battle, so I found it a little funny as I was giggling, going like, "Ha ha, Stan!" And then when there was like a part where like <laughs> when he's dealing with Stan, I even mentioned here when he's taking out a bunch of stands, like in Tokyo's VA has a lot of experience being able to take down an enemy stand <laughs> he's gonna be able to solo every single one of these don't worry about it oh the, there's also a part where the the husband shows up and he's like this is serious i can tell because there's like a go 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 coming out of his mouth <laughs> i see that in manga all the time what is this and he has like the little jojo like uh panel things that pop up which is really funny um Yep, that's this episode. Let's go on to the last one, which is episode 134. Be very careful when using ghost stories. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> I think... Th- I don't remember if they start playing immediately. Uh, I don't remember if they start with the fighting or they start with Ray's backstory at the beginning. Do you remember? Uh, I think the very beginning, uh, is Ray's backstory. Yeah. Because I, I, like, I don't remember if the previous one shows us that he's possessed by Ray immediately or just that he's possessed in general. No, he does say he's, I think they do say that he's possessed and and they're in Ray's room, but I don't think she says anything. we don't see Ray until the beginning of this one, I think, because I think he busts out of the hole in the last one and he's got the possessed face on. And then the beginning of this one is she's right behind him, like, talking. Uh, and I, I think that it starts with her talking about, like, when the old lady found her on the side of the road. Oh, okay, yeah, which how she was an orphan and stuff like that. Yeah, she was, like, a, 
abandoned uh, and she needed and the old lady took her in it was like the beginning of it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so they show a little bit of that there um they then start getting into the stand fight for realsies um and while they're in the middle of fighting Gintoki starts switching to the other stands because he's a stand user who can have multiple stands in him so he starts with kagura and he turns into kagura for a bit and he fights with kagura um he switches to uh otai and otai has like the power of like shooting shadow balls out of her fist um and i think she even mentions like what kind of power is this that this girl is just able to do this <laughs> she's one of the strongest yeah but she makes like the rosengan and then she calls it like fried eggs yeah exactly uh, it looks like he's gonna turn into Shinpachi, but he, instead he turns into Kaniku Man, which is obviously a reference to, uh, Kaniku Man. And where Shinpachi is, Shinpachi's, like, in the ass of him for some reason. <laughs> I don't fully understand why. <laughs> Even as a fan of, uh, Kaniku Man, don't know why he's there, but he is. Uh, and finally, um, I think he also calls him, like, Jimmy Heavenly is the name of the Shinpachi stan. Oh, apparently, which is a reference to the singer of Gintama's first OP. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's funny. I had no idea. I thought it was just like a JoJo joke. <laughs> but they, it is it is a JoJo joke, joke because they're naming it after a rocker. It just so happens to be one of the ones who made the first OP for Gintama. Um, but yeah, they start fighting, and then finally he says he's going to reveal his most powerful stand. And it turns out that the final stand that he has is Xavier, and he turns into Xavier, and he just fucking shoots her. And it, it immediately... Yes, that was the funniest part, is when they're like, you're out of you're out of stand. And he's like, no, I have one more. Uh, and yeah, Xavier just pulls out a gun and shoots her. <laughs> and, he, and they're all like, this guy wasn't even here. It's like, it's just, oh, he, was, he was beaten by like a random off-character. <laughs> Not even one of the weird ones of the arc. Um... So yeah, Oya concedes defeat. She says, like, you know, you got me. There's nothing I can do. But her stand refuses to give up. Um, The reason is is that they've kind of mentioned it throughout the episode that she made a promise with her husband that the husband would always take care of her in the inn. And the ghost is taking that to the literal extremes and says, like, he's refusing to give up the fight. So he starts, like, absorbing all the stands of him around him. And he gets... he It it turns into a... the joke from Team Four Star. <laughs> Remember the one about Goku getting the spirit bomb and asking for the energies of all of the ones from Earth, and he take they take like the energy from like a mom deer <laughs> that happens yeah. to a, a random <laughs> squirrel on the side who's just kind of yeah. chilling, and its spirit gets taken out of it. I thought it was funny because it reminded me of that joke. I don't remember where I was from. Probably from... Hey, literally, any time he uses a spirit bomb is where that joke could come from. It might be from Namek. I we- think it's from the vegeta either the vegeta fight or like tree of might it might be yeah but he's just like you know what just a little bit more energy and then it cuts to a deer as it falls he goes like mom <laughs> yeah because it, it, the, the early spirit bombs are the ones where he like uses nature's energy and stuff whereas the later ones he's just like put your hands in the air so i can use yours yeah yeah w- one, one of my favorite jokes but yeah it reminded me of that when the squirrel fell over and it's uh it's stand went into this one so yeah all the stands are being absorbed and uh turning into like this giant version of him um it gets really bad to the point where it's like um gintoki's trying to tell him like hey you can't go inside him because if you go inside him that's basically game over for you so why don't you go inside my body and at that point gintoki is then forced out of it the suction is that strong he even makes a note he's like oh with suction this strong it can go into any household (laughs) Yeah, he's like, the suction is so strong, everyone should have this in their house. <laughs> yep. Um, it's like, okay, everyone, quickly go back into my body. And as he attempts to go back into his body, a gunshot goes off and it reveals Savior is still in there. And he just yeah. walks, he walks off with his body. Yeah, he just takes his body and leaves. He's like, Savior, come back, that man just stole my body. <laughs> it was funny. Um... The force of the vacuum is super powerful. It's starting to suck up anyone. Ayoa tries to tell him, like, go inside my body. And she, like, offers her a way to go inside, which is from her hand, which is her stand. Is to- her own stand is starting to get sucked out. So she offers her a hand from her ass. 
And he's like, don't. I don't want to go in there from there. He's like, and then she makes a joke and they don't show it, which I thought was, oh, they they really couldn't show this. But she's like, oh, well, if it's not from the back, how about the front? He's like, no! <laughs> just <Yeah. laughs> I'm not going in there. I'm not going in there. Um, This is where Ray also ends up being sucked inside. Uh, no, Iowa starts to get pulled inside, and then Ray just kind of martyrs herself, tells her that... Um, yeah, she, like, pushes her back. Yeah, uh, pushes her back so she could be saved by Gintoki, who's, like, reaching out for her. That's when Iowa starts to reflect on her life in general and saying that she felt alone because ever since she was, like, a kid, she could always see all the stands around her. Um, and they were... She had troubles actually getting along with people, but she was able to get along with um, the stands pretty easily. And then, you know, she eventually made a resort with her husband and Ray, uh, Ray where they could kind of... Which the original idea of the resort was that um, she'd be able to help them. It was supposed to be a place for people who couldn't move on and that they could kind of stand here. And if they weren't able to move on, at least there would be someone there to wash their back for them. And when she says that, you see the skeleton, which is the same skeleton that Gintoki rubbed the back of. Um, And she starts to realize that she's actually the cause of all of this and that she's been holding them back from being able to move on. And she feels really bad about this and she starts to cry over this, including the fact that her own husband is unable to go on to the afterlife because of what she's doing. Because she's being forced of them to stay in there because of how afraid she is of being alone. But then she remembers the the words that Ray says, like, no matter what, as it will always be kind of, like, inside your heart, as long as you can remember us and stuff like that. Uh, so she cries, and the tears are able to bring down the giant Stan. And finally, all the ghosts are able, to, after the confession, uh, the ghosts kind of get ex- exercised, and they're able to go into the afterlife. And before they go, they all remind her that no matter what, that she's not alone because she always has the memory of them and all the good stuff related to them as well. And Iowa goes to see off the the crew for all the help that they've done for her. And she'll be it it looks like she's going to be running the resort for herself. Um, But then it turns out that Ray never moved on and she's there now. And she says, like, oh, what are you doing here? And she's like, I have some unfinished business here. And she says um, the unfinished business is that she wants to – she's going to stay here until she has to wash the back of a certain man, which I think is supposed to be implied Gintoki. Uh, there's a certain I man that I was. want – Yeah. yeah. She jokes about, like, there's a certain man that I want to wash the back of, which I think um, before they leave, uh, Iowa tells Gintoki, if you ever – after you die, feel free to stop by here so you can – so someone can, so I can wash your back, or someone can wash your back, and you think he says like, I like I would want an old lady to wash my back, <laughs> and they leave on that kind of terms. But then, yeah, I think that, and then they kind of just laugh, and the episode ends as they play a the classic kind of like black and white ED of like the arc that we've gone on, except for it had it's set to the song Gintoki sang in the last episode. <laughs> And he doesn't sing the full song uh, because he doesn't know the full song. So it eventually goes into the actual ED at the end. But uh, that's the end of this arc. That's the end of it all. So why don't you tell us about how you feel about the end of this arc, Zen? Now, after we've gone on this four-episode journey, how do you feel by the end of it? Uh, the ending was okay. It was kind of sweet. Um, I liked when Rey sacrificed herself and when she didn't go on to heaven. And I liked when they met the new ghosts together. And they kind of welcomed him to the hot spring. Um it, it was okay. It, it was a better ending than it, the rest of it deserved. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, I ended up uh, really liking it by the end. Again, I had a different experience with it because I didn't have to follow up the immediate like the emotional crushing that was that dog one. So I was able to come with it with a little bit more of a fair mind. Even though I do think the first two episodes are very easy to lose a lot of people i think 131 i think you immediately are lost if you follow this up after that last episode i think this that episode is actively a lost cause if you go from that episode to this one I, there's no one it would have to have been one of the greatest funniest episodes and it just isn't that uh-huh. it's just the, the it sure isn't no it is just the setup to what is coming in um and the episode that follows that <laughs> they spend a lot too much time with the nobunaga joke <laughs> 
to an insane degree. Sometimes when they kind of run off the rails with a joke in, in Gintama, it can be really funny. But when the funniest part of that joke is Xavier who shoots him and it's like three seconds. <laughs> like that's the funniest bit from that part. And I didn't even mention that all those dudes actually end up moving on in the next episode because I immediately forgot about them. <laughs> They're just not the best part of it, so it's kind of weird to do an entire episode kind of based around them in 132. But for 133 and 134, I was kind of into it um, through it all, and I was enjoying it. I think it probably would have been better if it would have been a little bit shorter. Four episodes for this sounds kind of a lot. If they had cut a lot of the Nobunaga stuff, I think you could have had a very decent three-episode arc here, actually. But Yeah, the, the, the middle one where it was just like the whole episode was just no Banaga jokes was definitely the worst <laughs> of all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was, it was kind of doomed from the start going up against that dog mini arc. And then it was just like, it tried to have an emotional payoff at the end. that was just not nearly as good as the emotional payoff of the dog mini arc. It was doomed from the beginning, man. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's an interesting choice to have him back. I think they could have been better off if he had been maybe a little bit, before it or after it who knows but i know for sure and i i definitely feel like this one specifically should have been shorter <laughs> four episodes for this it's either either it, like it's either that or replace all the nobunaga jokes with maybe some more jojo jokes and i would have been maybe a little bit more on board with it but it really wasn't that many of them uh but yeah so it's 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 so it's okay i think even with i think it's fair to say now that we had someone that at least was able to see it with some in between between this one and that one i would say that this ep- this arc is still okay there have been way better ones but it's a nice like sweet end of them i do end up liking ray and that old lady got kind of got me into it after she absorbed that stand and started fucking the shit up out of gintoki <laughs> i thought she ended up being all right after that so yeah that's the end of this one and that's the end of gintama for this week and we did it two weeks in a row baby we were able to talk about um, uh, <laughs> Gintama. Shonen Arca, yes, we're in... We, it was certainly some episodes. It was, but don't worry. We have some more some episodes. This was a six-episode one. Next week is going to be four episodes. It's episode 135, which based off at the end of this one, it's the return of Gintaman, everyone's favorite, not Gintama. Hell yeah. <laughs> and the the ape, the giant ape <laughs> making manga. Oh yeah, the gorilla mangaka. Yeah, he's he's back. <laughs> so I'm looking forward Hell to that. Yeah. That's that, what I'm here for. Yes, that will be episode 135, 136, uh and 137 and 138. They're all kind of like uh one-offs. Um so we'll be able to just see those four episode one-offs and then following that one Oh boy, baby, we've got the Hosh- Yoshirawara in Flames arc, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight episodes. Episode 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, and 146. So it's going to be some interesting times. The reason that everything's kind of a little screwed up here is that we had to make sure that we would have enough time for that specific arc stuff so had to fit it in this way and then funny enough if we if we have to look uh, after that one but we'll see how it looks after this it looks like it would be a very easy then we'll be and then we'll only be like four episodes away from being 150 episodes down from gintama and only like 150 more 150 plus more to go after that <laughs> so pretty fun stuff here all right, that's the end of this one, folks. Thank you very much for watching Shonen Archive. As always, you can go to Zen's channel and you can check out Zen as he talks about uh, weekly Shonen Jump over in Shonen and Chill. He has a very chill time talking about all your favorite weekly Shonen Jump manga, such as... Except for One Piece. Except for One Piece. If you want One, one Piece, you can... Yeah, I'll start my own version of Shonen and Chill called <laughs> just one piece it's called it's gonna be called shonen and zen won't cover one piece it'll be me 
and deep free as we talk about the latest chapter of One Piece. This is just the latest One Piece chapter for six minutes. For six minutes. I wonder if I can actually convince them <laughs> to, for a joke for one week to say, like, hey, I, are you, oh, no, he actually isn't caught up with the month. God damn it. Okay, I need to find a co-host. If you're a co-host who's willing to talk for six minutes for a bit <laughs> to make fun of said show not covering One Piece, one of the most popular uh, manga out there right now, uh, you can listen to all the One Piece fans tell you all the sales data and then say it doesn't apply when someone else starts up selling them. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm on your side and then boom I hit you from the left <laughs> that's how it goes anyway follow Zen right there for all your non One Piece manga related needs uh, and if you want more One Piece well you can come to me I'll occasionally say One Piece stuff <laughs> <laughs> but mostly it's a lot of Fago. You gotta fill the void. Yeah, I gotta fill it with something. When Fago's not doing something, I need to find something to fucking fill the void up with, that's for sure. I do some other stuff, though. I occasionally talk about, um... I uploaded the Street Fighter Six stuff. There you go. You can check out Zen. I actually did upload the, the one win that I had against you on that one, but then I also put in the fucking around-the-world grab-throwing that you did to win that one game, so it all balances out. <laughs> One loss with one extremely humiliating way to just fucking lose, as I just constantly got grabbed and <laughs> went coast to coast. Yeah, I, I think I literally did just walk you to the other side of the screen with grabs. You 100% did. I started at the end of one screen, and I ended at the end of the other screen after all the fucking grabs that happened in that game. It was insane. But yeah, occasionally some other stuff goes up there. Uh, it's not always for go, but you know, it's whatever I feel with it. And then whenever I uh, actually have time when I'm not crazy busy with work, which I have to deal with now. So that's the end of Shadow Archive, everyone. We will see you guys next week. Until next time, you guys have a good old day. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.